up saying, we've detected that there is malware on this site. You may want to decide not to go there, or if you do decide to go there, it's at your own risk. Uh, so that's a helpful kind of thing. And of course, email filters are available to try to detect and filter out attachments and other kinds of uh, malicious content. Uh, these are all, uh, you know, tools which help mitigate but don't eliminate uh, the problems. And on spam, of course, it continues to flow. It's, it is, its success is a consequence of the inexpensive ability to send mail for free and to transmit it at very low cost to large numbers of people. Uh, I've often thought that the spammers are making money out of this. This is not just a fun thing. They, they offer their services. So I thought, well, maybe we should form a small cabal which lets it be known that we're interested in using the spammer services and when we find out who they are, we reinstitute public flogging as a means of discouraging this particular kind of behavior on the net. Now here's something that some of you uh, will recognize, Jakob Ryumilien or But the reason I put this up is that we are about to introduce internationalized domain names in the internet. Starting in 2008, there will be an opportunity to register top-level domains in character sets other than Latin. And uh, just to show you what a pernicious problem this is, uh, happycakebake.py is the Latin rendering of this, but that's actually also Cyrillic. And PY could mean RU for Russia in, in Cyrillic. So when you look at that, a human being can't tell that that particular string is Cyrillic. It looks like it's Latin, and in fact, the, the letters look exactly the same, because they are the same. The problem is the computers can tell the difference between them because the Unicode distinguishes Cyrillic from Latin and the codes, even with identical looking characters, have different codes. So you can easily click on something thinking you're going to Paraguay, because that's what PY is, top level domain of Paraguay, but you're actually going off to someplace else after we've introduced the ability to put in uh, top level domain names in, uh, in other than uh, Latin characters. So there are other overlaps like this. So there are risks associated with introducing these internationalized domain names. The IETF has worked very hard to reduce the risks as much as possible by eliminating certain kinds of characters that uh, introduce confusion uh, for the users. But nonetheless, we are going to experience more opportunities for uh, confusion in domain names as a consequence. There is enormous pressure, political pressure, from people who, whose languages require other than Latin to uh, express uh, domain names uh, to have this ability to put in IDNs. And so it's going to happen, but uh, for all of you who are concerned about risks, this is just another complexity that you'll have to deal with. We also are going to run out of IPv4 address space. The es estimate now is that ICANN will have allocated the last block somewhere around 2010 or 2011, and then subsequently the RARs that reassign those IP addresses will run out within a year or two from that. So IP version 6 is the only escape route to have a larger address space, except we can't just change everything over to run only IPv6. So we're going to run v4 and v6 in parallel. People will be running dual stacks in the servers and in the client.